it's not a situation where you look at them and say, oh, they're not going to be as good because they got guys injured. You got to prepare for them the same with the same urgency and the same care. So especially them because they're a really deep team. They got a lot of guys that are capable of, you know, just kind of stepping in and giving the same production. So I don't think anything changes for us. Yesterday, Terry was talking about how it has to be all five of you guys going up against Jokic. It's not like a one-on-one -on -one against him. Um, just, we've, we've talked about him many times, but going up against him, what, what is that like? I mean, he's a he can make threes. He can score on a block. He's a great passer. He's smart. He knows how to draw fouls. I mean, he's he's always a threat, and um, everybody around him is is really complimentary of, of his style and his game. So um, that makes it hard to deal with, and I think that's the reason why it's not a one man job. It's you know it's going we gotta make sure we stay below our men, so he's not throwing back doors and lobs and. Um, ISOs at the, the free throw line, we're not leaving guys on the island and, you know, allowing him to pick us apart to where it's like we hugging our man and then he's playing one on one. Um, so I think it's, it's definitely a five man job. But if I had to put one person on him that I feel like could give him some trouble, I would I would pick us on just because of the, the length, you know, and his ability defensively and his ability to move. So. Um, we coming into it knowing that we got to be ready to help and, you know, it's going to take a um, the whole group on the floor, but Hassan is, is up for that challenge. Tim, when you guys played here in December, uh, they basically did everything they could to get the ball in your hands. Um, and it seems like the way, particularly with the way you're playing now, that like, I imagine they'll probably try to do the same thing again. Like, Do you feel like you've found like, a rhythm in terms of, of getting past that at this point, or do you feel like the team is maybe better equipped to, to deal with that at this point, just with the personnel? And the I think we've improved at it, yeah. you know, when teams try that. But, I mean, every game is different. Yeah. And, um, I'll be aggressive and I'll, you know, try to find ways around it and, you know, we'll see. Um, but I don't think it's anything um, coming that I haven't seen before. So, you know, we'll just see when, when we roll the ball out. One of the videos I liked so much after the, the last game you had was when everyone, we talked about everyone saying MVP and then CJ doing his little dance and then you retweeted it. What did that mean to see him just so excited for you? It didn't surprise me. I mean. It's a good feeling knowing that, you know, your, your backcourt mate and one of your friends is like cheering you on. You know, is I think in this league, a lot of times they put players against each other and compare them and say, you know, uh, they make it a competition. And I think um, our friendship hasn't allowed that to kind of be a thing ever. So um, I think that was just a prime example of that. It's funny, when I talk to people, they, they ask me, like, are Damon CJ really friends? Like, for some reason, it's hard for people to really wrap their brains around that. I mean, you two, you two are really, truly friends. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, nothing, it's nothing else to really say. I mean, I don't, I think that, that speaks more into how, how often it is that people fake friendships and pretend that stuff is something that is not. And it's really nothing for us to explain. Like, when, when you know, you just know. We... we our family spend time around each other. He spends time around my family. He knows all my friends that I grew up with. Like, he's really one of my friends. So, um, it, ain't no, it ain't no faking it over here. We just, if we didn't like each other, the kind of person that he is and the kind of person that I am, I don't think it would be like, I don't think it would be hard to tell, so. It does seem like there was just a new level of joy on the court with in that moment, you know, CJ was cheering you on, dancing. Mello was pointing to the crowd, telling them to keep cheering. And does it feel like with this turnaround that there's just maybe some more more fun, more joy around? It's always more fun when you're winning. Um, if I had 50 and we was losing, it probably would have been like nothing. You know, it wouldn't have been an MVP chant and nobody would have been celebrating anything. So um, I think the what's causing all of that and is, is winning. And um, that's, that pretty much solves everything. Does it make you guys maybe play a little looser when, when you're not, when the winds are coming? I wouldn't say looser. I'd just say it's a better, more swagger about us, just more confident in, in what's happened, like what the outcome is going to be regardless of how the game is going. Um, I think we just have more confidence because we see that what we're doing is working, like it's leading to wins. and. Everybody's happy with the way that it's happening. So um, I think that's, that's why it looks that way.
Random question from Brooke. Mike Tyson picture. Is that from yesterday or L.A.? No, that was the day before the game in L.A. I did his podcast, yeah. So. What, what, have you all, I know you said this, but what have you liked most or what do you admire most from Mike Tyson? Why do you like him so much? I mean, I, I'm a huge boxing fan. Like, all I do is watch boxing when I go home. So knowing his, his style as a fighter and who he was as a person when he was, like, at, in his prime, and then just seeing the, like the transformation and like the turnaround to like who he's become today after all he's been through, and, um, I just think that's the greatest the greatest thing ever. Just for him to be able to, you know, face his his problems he had with drugs and you know from his past, his childhood, you know, fight off all those demons and and find a way to you know to to still be here for one and just and to be an icon in a positive way and to still. Um, to become one of the most loved people and not just one of the most loved fighters. You know, I think that's special. What, who has he become? What is he like now? Because you just spent time with him. He seems like just a very interesting person. I mean, well, it's just not Iron Mike Tyson. You know, not that, like, wild, crazy person. I mean, he's like, he was a really nice dude. I mean, everybody around him, you can tell they, like, really love him. Um, and just everything that he's into now is, like, it's so far off from what you would expect Iron Mike Tyson to be doing right now. So, I mean, I just got a lot of respect for it.